Hello and welcome to the finals of Grand Prix Boston Worcester. I'm Ben Swartz, joined here in the booth by Ray Punzlon. Hello. And we've got quite the match for you. On the left-hand side of your screen, we've got Robert Victory with a black-red aggressive deck playing against, on the right-hand side of your screen, Brian DeMars, who we just saw demolish Alex Lloyd in over an hour-long game one. And it looks like Tormented Soul will start the beats off for Robert Victory, but that will face an early Searing Spear for him, Brian DeMars. Stands of Delirium, first card drawn by Robert. But little does, well, m maybe Robert knows already, but Brian DeMars has a main deck elixir of immortality in his deck. Krenko's command come down for Robert to create two 1-1 one, one goblin tokens. And let's see how Brian wants to deal with that. Looks like a turn three wall of fire. Okay. So we know Brian has a lot of defensive cards, like the he's playing two wall of fires, a Kraken Hatchling in his deck, and Trying to think what else, um, but it's a pretty good start to it. Pretty defensive, st defensive strategy Brian's looking for. He looks to end the game with his Sphinx of Uthan, along with uh, the Stormtide Leviathan. Or Krenko's mob boss, as we saw him win last game with. Mm. Robert's going to attack him with his two tokens, deal one damage to Brian Mars, putting him at 19, and play a quick Sands of Delirium. I like to call the card Sands of Victory. Maybe we'll get renamed if Robert Victory wins Grand Prix Boston <laughs> Worcester. Divination for Brian Mars. Probably hoping to pick up the elixir before it gets milled away. Brian Mars passes the turn back, holding a red up to boost his wall of fire if Robert decides to attack, but Robert's just going to pass it back. Brian draws. No elixir for him. He'll go with divination. Okay, two more chances to draw elixir. I mean, Robert's going to be able to mill four cards oh, is here. Is that the elixir in his hand already? Oh, it looks that way. Wow. So, so yeah, Brian's going to go ahead and cast <laughs> Goblin Arsonist first. Going to hold off on the Elixir of Immortality. Yeah, he wants to keep Robert. If this is a game plan, he wants to keep Robert on that game plan. Yeah, on, on the hook. Yeah, instead of playing any creatures, how about every turn you mill me for five, you mill me for six, okay. and then I'll go play my Elixir. Hopefully I could build up a board at that point and start taking down your life total. Brian Mars draws for his turn, plays an island, and casts. Sto is it the. Uh, Tauran's Invocation. Yep, Tauran's Getting two, two, two Drake tokens into play. Two, 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 two. So this Goblin Arsonist probably comes in because it could take down two goblins if the block. No reason for Robert here to block. Oh, he is going to block, and uh, Goblin oh. Arsonist will trade for the Krenko's command tokens. Robert's going to mill for five. He's really all in on the Sands of Delirium play. Five cards get milled, they're all good. Oh, is that five, nine, and then another four? There's probably a, about 20 cards left in Brian's deck, I'd say. It's pretty obvious that Robert is <laughs> clueless <laughs> yeah. uh, of, these, of the Elixir of Immortality. If he took a peek during the feature match, he would realize that was a big I mean, Maybe he knows victory. it's there, but he's hoping that Brian hasn't drawn it yet. He's hoping that he can still mill it away and has a chance. Maybe you think Brian's kind of like the way he's looking at his graveyard, looking if the elixir ends up there to keep Robert even more on the hook on uh, staying on that plan. Maybe, but I don't know. It, it depends. He's counting his library. I think that's that's a sign. Yeah, he has to be careful here. <laughs> Maybe he's got like 15 cards. I want to say in his library. He says, "Can I play my elixir? Do I have to play my elixir now, right. or can I hold off for a little bit longer?" So now it's got to be clear to Robert that Brian has his elixir of five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I. Yeah, 15 cards. It looks like 15 Brian's. cards. So mills him for six, goes down to nine. Another six goes to three. Draw a card for a turn that should he should be fine to wait another turn, but. Yeah, Brian just passes the turn up with. Seven mana, six cards get milled. All right. Now, this will be real awkward if Robert has something like a duress. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and duress you. Incredibly awkward, but I'm going to check Robert's list. Does not look like he has a duress in the main deck. He's just going to pass it back. Brian's going to draw. Brian now he has him? to play the elixir, right? Yeah, he has no choice but to play the elixir. Because then Robert could end of turn mill, well. and then... Uh, Mill again during his turn. <laughs> oh, there. Robert's like, all right, you have the elixir. Is Brian going to use it immediately, the elixir? I don't think so. I think he'll wait. 
So Robert Victory's probably thinking about can he win using Elixir for a second go through or does he need to start blocking those tower and invocation tokens? Looks like he's going to go first for the Sands. Yeah, leaving one card there. He probably wants to mill that card to force... Oh, he doesn't want to mill... Okay. Well, Brian is going to still at end of turn, shuffle back his entire deck, I'm using the Elixir of Immortality. I'm kind of curious. So why did he, he do it at this point? Because you kind of... Um, you could wait one more turn. Yeah, and got another activation out of... Either Sands. force him to use a Sands on his turn, or you could have just waited till you drew that card. Yeah. Well, the last card was uh, Unsummoned, so I'm not sure Brian wanted it. Okay. But Brian passes the turn back. Yeah, Robert's just sitting at 12 life. Let's see if he changes his game plan here. And Brian ends up with the uh, Elixir in his hand again. It's going to look pretty, <laughs> pretty silly if he goes for that plan. Sure. It's two Tormented Souls, Volcanic Strength. Chandra's Fury. Yeah, Chandra's Fury. Man, Volcanic Strength is so powerful against Brian's deck. He has two main deck Volcanic Strengths, Rob Victory. Sort of like he's pre-boarded against Brian DeMar's deck. Robert thinking over his options here. Now, uh, yeah, Tormented Soul. Tormented Soul um, is probably one of the common targets Robert uses for the Volcanic Strength. So, now the Mountain Walk doesn't necessarily, uh, wasn't necessarily a big boost, but now it gives Robert more options of who he would like to enchant with the, um, with the enchantment. I mean, the big problem, though, here is that he's, he's facing down those two Drake tokens. Looks like Robert's going to continue on the Sands of Delirium route. You gotta think he's gotta forfeit this route in the sideboard because there's a second elixir of immortality in Brian Demar's sideboard, right? Brian Demar's Demar's also count ag again counting up Robert's yeah. lands to make sure that he's not gonna randomly lose this game. Yeah, I'm so surprised that Brian had activated his elixir at the end of the turn. Looks like end of turn, Brian. Seven mana. This looks. This sounds like a Sphinx. <laughs> and there's a yeah. Sphinx. Five cards. Are any of them elixir? I don't think it matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I think Brian has enough cards, yeah. and <laughs> Robert doesn't have enough turns, seeing only at eight life. That it shouldn't make a difference. Looks like Robert's going to make it divination or the rest. Brian takes <laughs> the four cards, maybe. Like, all right. Divination or the four or one. Robert's thinking if he wants to run take take backs. <laughs> oh no, no Brian. <laughs> yeah, Brian takes the four card pile and passes it back. Robert's six, facing seven, lethal two, damage. Three, four, and five, six. Krenko in the yard. Interesting. I think if Robert just played this game aggressively and didn't try to go all in on ends of delirium, he yeah. might have had a chance. Yeah, he had multiple tormented souls. He had his Chandra's Furies. He had volcanic strength. Seven. He's gonna go ahead and use Sands Delirium right now. One, two. I don't think that's gonna be enough. He's facing nine. No, there's elixir, but <laughs> this is death on board. I think it's just one more time to look at your deck and then scoop it up. Okay. What did we miss the first time around? Oh, you got spell twine. Okay, all right, and he'll be packing. Yep, and right to Mars. <laughs> Wins the first game here, off the back of a Tauren's Invocation and a Sphinx of Ulfan. If you're just wow. joining us right now, we are here at the finals of Grand Prix Boston. In the booth is myself, Ray Punzalan, along with Ben Swartz. Uh, we, we just saw Brian DeMars take a 1-0 lead against Robert Victory. Robert decided to go all in on his Sands of Delirium plan early on after the uh, Tormented Soul with Searing Spear. It's really interesting, though, because as I said before, I think that that Robert Victory may have been able to win if he, he just gave up on the Sands of Delirium kill and instead decided to play one of his two Tormented Souls that was left in his hand, try to pump them up. I think that that might have been a better route to victory. Yeah, and now Brian has access to another Elixir of Immortality in his board you were mentioning? Yep. 
Yeah, so he has a second elixir of mortality in the board. Even if Robert decides to get rid of the Sands of Delirium plan, the five life from an elixir could be pretty huge considering how aggressive Robert Jax is going to be. Looks like Brian is sporting out the switcheroo. One other card. And we were mentioning how Robert has the volcanic strengths to melt and walk all over um, Brian to Mars. But Brian also has multiple unsummons. He has a searing spear. So he has a lot of defenses against that strategy as well. Hmm. Kraken Hatchling looks like it's going to come in for Brian to Mars. And once again, we get a look at the bracket. Let's see how these players got here. Brian DeMars defeated Thomas Holtzinger in the quarterfinals, and then he defeated Alex Lloyd and his black-green mid-range deck in the semifinals to get to the finals, where he's up a game against Robert Victory. Robert Victory made it here by defeating Jason Ford in the quarterfinals, and then defeating Cedric Phillips in his blue-white Flyers deck in the semifinals to be here. The finals of Grand Prix Boston Worcester. While the players are shuffling up for the second game here, Let's take a look at these players' deck lists and see see what strategies might be important going in to this second game. I'm looking at what maybe Rob can board in here. He's got a trumpet blast that maybe he wants. And besides that, looks like he's playing almost all of his cards of each of his color. Maybe he wants to board in a, a vile rebirth or a zombie goliath, but I think he wants to board out that Sanders of the Lyrum. It seems poor against Brian DeMars' Elixir of Immortality is plural. Yeah, Brian has the Elixir of Mortality that we, I think he'll probably bring in. Uh, in addition to that, he may, let's see, he has Incrust, doesn't really look look like he'll need that. He has, let's see here, Scroll Thief for, t for the toughness, might not really need that either. On the red end, he has a Slumbering Dragon. That's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, not, yeah, he's, not, he's play not playing, playing yeah, it. not playing a Slumbering Dragon. That could be a really good card against, um, against Rob, who's looking to attack with a bunch of small creatures at a time. Sure. So he dropped the Slumbering Dragon early. It's just a giant threat for uh, Robert to handle. Definitely. Players are, are finishing getting done with shuffling. Again, as I said, Robert Victory does not seem to have much in the way of sideboard choices. He's got one Smelt, one Trumpet Blast, one Zombie Goliath, one Vile Rebirth that are in his colors. I guess he's got one Cower and Fear and one Blood Reckoning doesn't seem like any of those cards will help him too much. But looks like the players are getting ready for their second game here of the finals of Grand Prix Boston Worcester. Drawing their opening hand. Let's see how this one ends up. All right, so Brian starts off um, looking at his hand. He has a go Goblin Arsonist, Wall of Fire. Looks like he has his Elixir of Immortality over on Robert's end. Can't make out many of his cards, but I believe the Sands of Delirium is still there. Brian decides to mulligan his hand. Okay, so Brian will go down to six cards. Did we get a look at Robert's hand? Yeah, I couldn't really make out Robert's hand at all. But I believe that he did keep the Sands of Delirium in there. Okay. So Brian Amaris quickly back up to his six card hand. Let's see if this one is a keep. All right, so we're looking at a, is that a couple lands in there. Nope, Brian's going down to five in game two of the finals. At least he's up a game, so even if that mulligan hurts him and forces him to uh, drive this to a game three. He still has that game three in order to win the, the championship. Okay, so will Brian DeMars 5 be able to lead him there? I mean, he's got quite a few draw spells. He's got Divination, quite a few cards that buy him time, cards like Wall of Fire, one, two, three, four, five, looks like four lands and a Rummaging Goblin. Brian Mars keeps in turn one tormented soul for Robert Victory. We saw that last time when he led off with that. Brian immediately dealt with it with a Searing Spear. Rob attacks for one, dropping Brian down to 19. And turn two. It's a walking, walking corpse. Yep. Yeah. 
Island Go for Brian. Rob draws Volcanic Strength. Man, that's huge. Yeah, throw that on the Walking Corpse right now. Your yeah. Tormented Soul ready is unblockable. Well, he's oh. going to attack first. He doesn't want to get blown at by an Unsummon, so maybe he's holding off and he wants to cast instead Sands of Delirium. There's the Sands of Delirium. This what time the Sands of Delirium is going to be accompanied by a little pressure. Roman Jig Goblin comes down as Brian's first play of the game. And now Robert Victory definitely wants to put that Volcanic Strength onto his Walking Corpse. Deal five points of damage. No, he puts it on the Tormented Soul. He puts it on the Tormented Soul. It's kind of... I mean, I guess Brian's not going to block anyway, but... He'll still take five. Brian will go down to 11. Yeah, I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to make your Walking Corpse unblockable as well. Brian Mars has his fourth land. And what can he play? Divination. That will draw him two fresh new cards. One of them is an unsummon, so... Maybe it's better he put it on the Tormented Souls then? And the unsummon there. <laughs> Brian Mars thinking through. Looks like he's... Is he going to rummage a combo? No, he just passes it back. Sands of Delirium mills for one. Just gets an island. There's a public execution in right. Robert's hand. Franco's command also. Looks like Brandon Mars is going to spend no time and unsummon the Tormented Soul. Take two. Dropping him down to nine life. Nine. And there is another unsummon in Brandon Mars' hand. Robert Victory will cast Cranko's command and Tormented Soul. So if Robert was just anticipating the unsummon, then putting on the Tormented Soul was a fine right. move over there. Assuming that Brian Barnes didn't want to immediately chump block with his rummaging goblin. Well, he's going to rummage away that unsummon. Looks like he drew a Searing Spear for his draw step. And he's a fifth land. Does, does Brian Mars is he going to be able to stabilize out of this? Looks like Tauran's Invocation. Wow. That's one way to stabilize. He still needs an answer for that Tormented Soul and an answer for the Sands of Delirium. So he's got a little way to go. Yeah, he's a couple of options that you can look for in his deck. He has the Fires of... Oh, Flames of Firebrand. There's the Kraken Hatchling. Now oh, another Volcanic Strength drawn for Robert. That's huge. <coughs> now where will he place it? Now he'll place it on the Walking Corpse. And he'll go ahead and attack in for five unblockable, dropping Brian down to only four oh. life. Brian looking back down at the unsummon that he rummaged away rummages away wall of fire now he really needs an answer Brian is sitting at four life I believe he drew is that spell twine that that will take care of the volcanic strength temporarily and he's got a, a flames of the firebrand to take out the uh, all three of the one ones probably is that where he wants to be right now but then he still has Okay, and cross oh, and cross there. And Flames of the Firebrand to take out the 1-1s. One oh, wow. Great Flames of Firebrand right there. Now Brian Mars only has to deal with the Sands of Delirium. Brian Mars attacks in for 4 with his Drake Tokens. Gets milled 1 by Robert Victory. Unlike the first game, though, Robert has been missing a lot of land drops, so wow. Sands of Delirium hasn't been able to get I even more effective. Brian's was able to, Brian was able to stabilize here. Brian attacking in for another 5, dropping Robert down to 10. And a Goblin Arsonist. Mill you for 3, Robert says. <coughs> Sphinx, Island, and Wall of Fire. Untap, is that a land? Yeah, Looks like a 4th land. land. Does that turn anything on for Robert except for another mill? I don't believe so. He's got a bunch of 5 drops in hand and a 6 drop. A Public Execution, a pair of Fire em Elementals, and a Chandra's Fury. Looks like Brian is content just attacking in for another six or for for six damage this six. turn. Robert is gonna draw down to four. Now there's not many cards that you can do. You can see Robert Rob shrug. One, Mill two. four, is that gonna be enough? A tormented souls off the top, and that's not enough. Congratulations wow. to Brian Mars, Mars wins Grand Prix Boston Worcester Worcester champion. What a great game to watch. Yeah, that, that was an excellent game there. Robert was 
seeing if he go with the Sands of Delirium plan. Lands weren't coming there. He had his Chandra's Fury in his hand. It would have ate up a bunch of, of the ground guys, but well, the Ryan was at four life, so if Rob oh, yeah. oh, threw right. a land, he would have he would have won that game. But no land off the top, just a Tormented Souls. And Brian DeMars is Grand Prix Boston Worcester champion. Wow. What a